Hello and good evening everyone and welcome to another webinar presentation brought to you by Opus IVS. My name is Henry Marino and I will be your instructor for this evening. Tonight we're going to go over how to subscribe and purchase a license for programming on motorcraftservice.com, how to download the Ford programming software called FJDS for free. Also we'll cover how to program PCM on a 2010 Ford Expedition and what to look out for. And towards the end, we're going to show you how to input ceremony strategy uh, and body IDs after replacing a valve body. All right, so let's get started. All right, guys, so uh, starting off the webinar, right now we have an exclusive offer for those who are looking to purchase a drive unit for the first time. Um, I, the Drive Pro ES basically is a diagnostics tool and a pro programming tool all in one. Uh, it comes with uh, master certified tech support from AES certified technicians who are capable of helping you diagnose vehicles and uh, programming vehicles uh, via remote or on the phone. Um, today in this webinar offer, we're going to be offering you guys a brand new uh, battery maintainer, which is essential for programming with uh, the Pasture device and anything you're looking to do with programming, it's very essential. Uh, and this is a great tool worth about $600 that you can be receiving for free uh, on this promotion uh, towards the end of November. Um, so this is a great tool to get started if you guys are looking to um, do uh, new programming and, and update software on modules. All right, uh, J2534 system requirements require you to have sufficient voltage. Uh, basically, you have to be between 12.5 and 13.5 volts. Anything less than 12 volts or more than 15 volts will cause programming failure. So it depends on the uh, vehicle, the programming guys, depends on the manufacturer as well. Um, if you're doing Nissan, um, you definitely want to have a maintainer, keep that voltage uh, sufficient. Uh, battery charger is not ideal for charging, uh, for maintaining a battery voltage in the vehicle. And we're gonna get into that in a little bit. Um, but for Ford, to be honest with you, if uh, the module, ten the battery tends to go down or the program fails, uh, there is ways to go back into it. But um, you want to, best practice, you're going to want to make sure that um, you're keeping that voltage up to par because you don't want to run into any issues during a programming event. Um, you know, so because you can run into a lot of different scenarios that could happen with the vehicle during programming, or, you know, that might cause some issues as well. Okay, so like I said, you have to make sure that you must have good battery uh, a good battery maintainer. I suggest getting a really good, um, you know, uh, known battery maintainer from a specific brand that you wish to go with. Uh, nothing really, you know, aftermarket like in Harbor Freight or stuff like that. You know, those things tend to be really cheap and don't really work too well. So you want to get a really good uh, maintainer, you know, a really good expensive maintainer because, again, like I said, you know, it's really important to maintain the voltage on the vehicles during programming. You don't want anything to happen during programming. Um, so let's just get into a little bit of, you know, the difference between a, a you know, battery charger and a battery maintainer. A battery charger basically supplies the battery with consistent amperage and a varying voltage. Uh, a battery maintainer basically supplies uh, the battery with consistent voltage and varies amperage. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a consistent voltage. Uh, we really don't care about the amperage too much. Of course, it's important, but the voltage is really important. We want to keep that voltage up because uh, we want to make sure that that module gets programmed the, the correct way and nothing happens during programming. As you know, with chargers, they tend to go up or down. So, you know, it, it depends on the status of the battery. So so, you know, if the voltage goes way too high, you're gonna, obviously the program is going to stop. Uh, if it goes too low, it's going to stop as well. So, you know, ideal, like I said, best practice, get a battery maintainer, um, you know, th to help you keep that voltage up. And the great thing is that today you, you can get one for free uh, with the offer. So uh, keep that in mind, all right? All right, so other system requirements are required for Ford are uh, Windows 10 Professional. Basically, you have to have Windows 10 Professional uh, software on your computer. Internet Explorer 11 or Microsoft Edge is fine. Uh, four gigabytes or greater um, on your computer, a processor of 2.1 gigahertz or greater. And a keynote, guys, um, if you bought a, a purchase a brand new computer for programming, that's wonderful. Obviously, you're going to get Windows 10 or newer on your new computer. But if you have a Windows 7 computer or, you know, when it's running 8.1 and you decide to upgrade Windows 10, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to run the software like you want to because uh, Ford wants you to have the latest and greatest uh, Windows 10 software that's out. And that, that basically uh, means all the newer computers that are out there. Anything that's older um, that is looking to upgrade to 10, it's not going to work, unfortunately, because they've updated all the systems in Ford. They're updating the software uh, periodically. So um, you want to get a brand new computer. If you have an older version, you've upgraded it, you might, you're not going to, you're not going to want to use that. You're going to want to go ahead and buy a new one. All right. 
All right, so basically when you go into Ford for the first time, you're going to go in and type in www.motorcraftservice.com. Uh, once you go into the website, this is basically what you're going to introductory page. Uh, it's going to ask you for your country. You're going to basically enter your country right there at the top. Then you enter in your language. You know, you could put in whatever language you're in or whatever region you're in. You could type it in so the, the, the uh, website can populate to your language. Once you do that, you're going to click on Submit. And that will bring you to the home page over here at uh, motorcraftservice.com. So basically, as you see in the top left-hand corner, you see little subject titles of what you can choose from. Over here is where you're going to go ahead and register for the first time. And you can apply any discount codes that you receive there, you know, when you receive any new parts or any new modules that you might get from the parts store. With a discount, you're able to enter it here as well. So let's get started with the categories on the top, okay? So uh, first things first is service information. Basically, this is giving you all the information for any workshop manuals that you may need, wire diagrams, TSBs that you're looking for. Um, you can purchase this at $21 for 72 hours. You can do a yearly subscription if you like. So, you know, if you're looking for all this information, you can go ahead and do this on this section right here. Training, you can get all different types of training information. If you're looking for training classes, you're looking for new things that are out right now that Ford is doing with their new technology, you can also go here and take a look at it. You can read through this page and see what other um, you know, repair information they have to offer, any trainings that you may, may want or are interested in. You can go here. Uh, key codes, okay. So um, key codes are very important right here. This is only to pertain to people. People who have LSID, that's a locksmith license ID. For you, those who don't have it, you're not going to be able to use this function, unfortunately, because this is basically an option for you to go ahead and enter your LSID so you can get the key code to be able to cut a key. All right. So a lot of times you have to cut Ford keys. You have to get a key code before you get it. And the only people who can access that is people who have LSIDs. So if you don't have an LSID, you ain't going to be able to access this. Uh, but if you do, uh, I'm just going to click on real quick at the bottom, a little circle, red circle there, just to show you a rundown of what the pages might look like. All right. So this is your security law job aid um, chart. Basically, this chart is just going to give you a rundown of how many uh, keys you may need, what's the max keys you need on certain model vehicles, what type of keys you can use on certain vehicles or what they require. Um, and also if you need to do different certain resets on different particular vehicles or what type of modules you're programming which require you to do a reset for the anti-theft system to know that something is replaced and so you can program it the proper way. All right. Um, again, um, you know, this is all for OEM. OK, um, aftermarket keys, uh, you can get away with this. Certain aftermarket keys are able to do it. But uh, when you're programming a PCM for the first time, uh, you're not going to want to use any clone keys. You're going to want to use uh, brand new OEM keys because with clone keys, the system will know as a clone key be programmed and it won't allow you to start the car. Uh, there's a lot of things going on out there in the industry right now that people are able to, you know, get away with it. But OEM standardized, you're going to want to use OEM keys. OK, um, I don't. I think it's the best practice to be able to run around that. I think you just go get your OEM keys and do it the right way so you can have a successful uh, programming event. All right, so moving along, uh, the next option is diagnostic tool support. Basically, this is your option, so you can go ahead and download your IDS, FJDS, or FDRS software here. You can get your updates here as well and also purchases your, purchase your license to be able to access the software uh, when you're looking to program a vehicle. Uh, free resources. Basically, this is free information that Ford is able to give you. You don't have to really get anything or register, uh, I mean, uh, purchase anything to be able to get the information. Basically, you get anything from body repair manuals. You can get anything from instructional sheets. You can also get the latest calibrations to determine software from the latest uh, latest software for emissions-related vehicles. You can get here uh, all the calibrations to see if something's up to date already. So you don't have to, you know, buy the software, go into it, and see whether or not there's, if there is an update. You'll be able to tell you there. All you have to do do is input the VIN information and also you get um, VIN uh, custom information uh, on this as well from just entering the VIN. So you can do all that with that option. Okay, so that's basically a rundown of all the options at the top. So you're looking to register for the first time, all you're going to do is click on the right hand corner middle of the page, uh, register today. Um, you do not need to register to download FJDS. You do not need to register to download FDRS. Like I said, uh, the software is absolutely free. What you're doing right now is you're registering so you can purchase a license to be able to use the software when you're ready to program a vehicle. All right, so all you're going to do is you can click on register today. Obviously, you're going to create a username, enter in your first name, then your last name, the state that you're in, your email address, 
type of user that you are, if you're a locksmith, independent shop, or, you know, whatever you are, just enter it so they know exactly what type of uh, customer they're dealing with. And then just create a new password, uh, confirm the password. And if you want, you can read the disclaimer at the bottom. It's just basically giving you some warning. If, you know, if anything, anything were to happen, you're agreeing that Ford is not liable for any of it. And once you accept that and agree with that, just click on the agree button and click agree again. You can also read this is the uh, terms and conditions that Ford's requiring you once you read that and you're okay with that you can go ahead and click agree on that as well all right and now I'm gonna show you guys how to download and purchase the FJDS software so again we're gonna download for free but what you're purchasing is a license to be able to use the FJDS software you don't need to purchase it to be able to download the software the software is free all right so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into the diagnostic tool support tab we're going to click on software. We're going to click on FJDS. Then once that pop-up screen comes up, I'm going to click on download software. You can also check the vehicle coverage if you wish, um, but right now we're going to go ahead and download the software. Once you get to this point at this page, maybe in the middle, it gives you basically uh, blue highlighted links. Uh, you can be able to click these links and be able to download the software for free at any computer that you wish to have. So you can download the IDS, FDRS, and FJDS software. Um, you can also uh, download the updates on this uh, section right here. In the middle, if you could see, it says, um, you know, the update IDS or update FJDS. So that's when something is available, you'll be able to click the link there and update it as well. Um, with IDS, basically, if you notice at the bottom, um, there's, um, you know, release updates uh, and what date the, the update's going to be released. Um, most of the times when an IDS has an update, FJDS has an update as well because um, FJDS likes to update the software, I believe, like, you know, once every two months or something like that, maybe even sooner or maybe even later. Who knows? It depends on what they, they want. But most of the time when IDS has an update, FJDS will have one as well. So as you can see um, right now, the update version uh, is 120.01, .01, and that will be updated on November 18th. Right now, um, you know, that should uh, – that that update got released a while ago, so that happened on the 18th. Uh, the next one's due on the – 25th, if you see. So this is the 16th, and the next one, 120.02, will be released on the 25th of this year. So there's gonna in two days, there's gonna be a new update that gets released. You want to make sure you keep up with these updates because if you don't, um, then you're gonna run into a lot of issues where certain modules are not being programmed, or you might lose communication on certain modules. So updating these softwares are very, very important. You do not want to miss it. I recommend that every time you decide to program a vehicle, they go ahead and check the coverage list just to make sure that the software is up to date before you go ahead and program the vehicles. You don't want to run into any issues, all right? So this is very important. Make sure that the software is up to date um, before programming anything because you will run into issues if something goes wrong during communication. Um, also, like I said in the middle right there, when you see an update available, you'll see a blue link pop up. You'll know there's an update available. Just click on that link, and it'll start updating everything for you. Okay, there's another way of doing it as well. You can also go, once you've downloaded the software, you should have the icon on your desktop. Um, you should have an option on your Start menu. You can click on Start um, on your PC. Click on Ford Motor Company. Uh, the folder, and then you're going to click on check for update. That would automatically start to check for updates and update the software for you if an update is available. Okay, so for the purposes right now, we've never downloaded the software on a PC for the first time. Right now, we're going to do it. So right now, I'm going to click on the FJDS 120 full version of the software. I'm going to download that, and I'm basically going to accept everything so I can get everything installed and everything's going in. I recommend you shutting off your firewalls as well if you have a really strong antivirus um, system or, you know, any firewalls up and running. You want to want to shut that down because a lot of those softwares tend to block the software from installing, and you're not going to be able to use it if it, you know, if it keeps blocking you. So you don't want to shut that down. Um, during programming. Also, during programming, you don't want to have any firewalls running. You don't want anything that might block or impede any information going into the module uh, because you have a firewall running on the PC. So you don't want to shut down your firewalls as well. All right, so once you have that all installed, uh, this little icon right here is going to appear. You can see it on your desktop. It says FJDS and it has a little icon of, you know, a little pencil, a paper there, and a little diagnostic tool um, ready for you to program. So that's the icon for FJDS. And once you're ready, all you're going to do is click on that icon. All right now, once you have that already loaded and your computer and everything ready to go, now it's time to purchase our licensing software. All right, so what you're going to do next is you're going to click on the diagnostic tool as well, support tab again, uh, software, FJDS again, and then this time you're going to purchase your software. All right, 
Now, for purchasing software, they got you have to purchase the software for IDS, you have to purchase your software for FJDS, and you have to purchase your software for FDRS. All right, so uh, you know a lot of people don't really you know understand you know the difference between IDS and F FDRS. I'm gonna just give you a real quick rundown of it. Basically, IDS is for vehicles that started from '96 up to current vehicles now. Right now, we have um, the IDS is able to do newer vehicles from 2018 and present. Um, but it, it does all the older vehicles as well. So if you have a VCM or VCM2 and you're using the IDS, you know you can use this as well with all the newer brands as well. And it's also compatible with, um, you know, uh, VCMM as well. Um, now then you have the FJDS, which only it does only um, J2534 compatible vehicles for S VCM2 and VCMM. So that's just going to program for vehicles from anything from, I believe, um, 2001 and up. Uh, all the older models it will do as well, but I think, believe it only goes up to 1998. Um, so basically, FJDS can cover from 98 and up. It can program those vehicles. Uh, just recently, uh, Ford uh, FJDS came out that you can actually do diagnostics as well with the pasture device. Um, you don't need the IDS, but it's very limited. Again, you only can do 2018 and newer models. So anything less than that, you're not going to be able to do those vehicles with J2534. You're going to need the VCI. Um, then you have the FDRS software, which only is compatible with 2018 models and newer. So what that means is that it cannot do anything in you know, 2017 or 16. It may have some software in there for 16 and 17, I'm not sure. But anything older than that, it's not going to have. That's all going to be all IDS if you're going to do those older model vehicles. But just, you know, again, IDS is from 96 and on. FDRS is from 2018 and on. And basically FJDS is compatible with 1998 vehicles and above and anything that requires programming. But for anything diagnostics, 2018 and above. All right. Um, so here's a little rundown of the price sheet for you guys real, real quick. So as you can see, there's two different types of uh, software licenses that you can purchase. Um, they have SF IDS with FDRS, software licensing ranging from 150 to 900 per license. Okay. So um, if you're looking, if you don't do too many programming and you just do it once in a while, then a two-day two will be ideal for you to program with IDS FDRS. It's only 150 for two days. But if you do a lot of uh, programming, you got a lot of uh, mass uh, work coming in, then, you know, and you, you've got mostly Fords, then it's ideal to get a 365, you know, get a $900 license in there so you can get um, do a lot more cars and you don't have to worry about the licensing. Uh, and they open up a lot more licenses for you as well. Um, opposed to the FJDS and the FDRS software licensing, um, it's only $50 per license. Again, the reason why it's cheaper than the IDS is because IDS has a more variety of range of vehicles that it can do. You know, it starts from 96 and on. Um, FJDS, you know, you can do programming from 98 to 2001, uh, to 2010, 2000, excuse me, 18. And then you can work with FDRS for 2018 newer vehicles as well. That's why it's a little cheaper. Uh, but for two days, it's $50 per license. Um, once you decide what you want to do, you're going to want to click on the here, con uh, click here to continue tab. Once you click on that, all right, you're going to get this page right here. So this page right here, you must, must register because this is the only way that you're going to be able to purchase the FJDS software, FDRS software, or the IDS software. Every single time you click to purchase a license, it's going to redirect you here. Okay, so just take your time to create a, a username and password and know that every single time that you need to purchase it, this is the login screen that you're going to be seeing. If you have any problems and you have some issues, I don't recommend calling us. I recommend calling the hotline for Ford because they'll be able to assist you on that. All right. If you guys are having trouble with your computer that you're not able to run the software, it might be because your software is not compatible with those 10 software that uh, the system requirement requires you to do. And if you call the hotline, that's where they're going to reject you and tell you if you have an old model, you're going to have to buy a new computer. Okay, so just keep that in mind when you're using the software of how the operating system works. It may be because your computer is not compatible. But overall, if you register online and you're able to, you should be able to purchase it with no problem and run the software with no problem once you do that. All right, so make sure you register online first before you purchase the software. All right, 
So, like I said, so that gives you a rundown of how to re uh, register, subscribe, and download the software and purchase your licensing for full programming. It's not that difficult. Um, you know, like I said, you know, purchasing Dry Pro Scan Tool gives you the capability of speaking to one of our master certified technicians over here at uh, Autologic or Drew Technologies, and they will walk you through any diagnostics or if you need programming in any way, you know, that they can, and they'll be able to remotely log in to your tool to assist you as well. So not only um, do you have a tool that's with you to help you diagnose and repair a vehicle, you also have the assistance of the technical team to be able to log in there, um, be there with you physically, and try to repair this vehicle with you that day. All right. So like I mentioned er to you earlier uh, in the webinar today, we're going to be doing a 2010 Ford Expedition. Uh, we're going to be programming a powertrain control PCM. And we're going to be updating a transmission control module with a uh, solenoid strategy ID and body IDs uh, once we place a valve body. Okay. Uh, this basically I'm going to run you down. I'm going to show you guys how to program a PCM. I'm also going to show you what to look out for when you're looking for an update or what the updates look like when you're updating a module and if you run into any other issues during a programming event. All right. All right, so once you click on that little tab that I mentioned to you earlier, the FJDS little icon on your desktop, uh, you're going to see this little screen pop up. It's the FJDS main, uh, main uh, startup screen. Um, that's going to start up. Just give it a minute to uh, boot up. And once you see that, um, you're going to see this menu right here. This is basically the FJDS Ford programming software. Okay, um, basically this is what you're going to use to program any vehicle with pass to J2534. Okay, this is what the FJDS uh, website program looks like uh, when it's loaded. All right, the top navigation bar icons at the top will be, be able to assist you on uh, setting different settings that you need uh, when using the program. The bottom navigation bar icons are going to be able to assist you on aborting a system or looking for any information uh, due to you know codes or documents and things like that within the vehicle. All right. So on the uh, top left-hand corner, before you get started, uh, when you're using the system for the first time, you're going to want to set it up. You want to make sure that the password that you're using is compatible with the software that the FJDS requires. So you're going to up up a left-hand corner. You're going to click on the little ball and socket. All right. And at the bottom, the middle one is basically going to give you a little like, computer with a little magnifying glass. Basically, it's just going to give you a rundown of the active information that's on the computer screen right now. So basically, the time and date that the software was purchased, um, that if you're a dealer or not, um, what software version of FJDS you're running, also uh, what patch device you're using. So it, it knows that you're using a J2534 Drew Technologies patch device. So it knows that. But, you know, again, you can always select in a different option. I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, and then when you, if you click the little Swiss Army knife next to the computer icon, you get this menu right here. It's basically the system utilities uh, that the system, you know, you can utilize to be able to change certain things. So most of the times you're going to mainly live where it says select SAE J2534. This is basically where you're going to be able to edit what password device you're using. So if you're not necessarily using a Drew Technologies password device or you're using a different aftermarket device, you can go, go in there and change the password device if you wish to. Um, and that's basically where you're going to go to change that. Um, if you um, have to do any licensing, uh, once you purchase your license, be able to, this is going to where you're going to be able to manage your license uh, once you receive it and be able to activate it. Basically, you'll also be able to see whether it's a valid license if you'll be able to validate it. Uh, you can return the license if you wish to return it so nobody else uses the license or, license, or you can recover it during your last sessions as well. So basically, this is where you're going to be able to go and activate and remove the license whenever you feel like it. All right. Um, okay, so once you do that, all that, um, basically, like I said, you're not going to be using this stuff too much. I don't recommend you going to do too deep into using these functions because you don't want to, you know, mess something up or change something that you don't understand and you might not be able to work the system because that's when you're going to be calling the hotline if you don't, you can't get the system to work. So I don't recommend, you know, touching anything else on the tab unless you're more advanced in the system of uh, learning it. Um, but for those purposes, I would just, you know, uh, Focus on choosing your patch device and when you can activate your licenses. All right. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start our session. So up our middle um, icon where it has the little blue car, you're going to click on that so you can start your session. Anytime that you need to start your session, that's where you're going to be clicking. Um, you can either start a previous session, you can start a new session. So if you have previous sessions that you had before, you can always go back to the previous session and see, you know, go back into where you're working at so the system will automatically populate every, everything you were doing before. 
But since today we're doing a PCM, we're going to start a new session. So I'm going to click on Start New Session. And then on the bottom right-hand corner, there's a little tick mark, which is a little check mark. You're going to click on that check mark to get started. All right. So right here is just going to give you a rundown real quick to make sure everything is connected properly, that the key's on engine off, that the parking brake is applied, and that the vehicle is in, um, you can apply the, in the park or neutral position. Most of the times I'd like you to be in park. If you, you know, you know, chalk the wheels, uh, put that car in park. I wouldn't leave it in neutral at all. You don't want that thing rolling off. If you don't have a chalk, God forbid. So just make sure that you have the vehicle in the park position, and then just make sure you cl click on the tick on the check mark. All right, and then it's automatically going to start reading the vehicle. Make sure you communicate. Once you communicate with the vehicle, it's going to populate the type of vehicle that we're working on. Um, like I said, it's a 2010 Ford Expedition. It knows that it's a 5.4 uh, fuel type gasoline, and it's an automatic transmission. Once I know that and I understand that and I've gathered it, I'm going to click on yes. Now, if you can't get to this point and there's an issue that – that you can't get to this point, that you're saying, I'm starting a new session, I'm clicking the check mark, and I'm, I can't get to the next point, then there, there, there's a couple of things that might be going on. Either A, the battery voltage is not sufficient and the battery voltage went down, or um, you're not communicating with the PCM at all. There's something with communication that's not allowing you to get into the system with communication. So you don't want to go back, you know, make sure that everything is uh, copacetic, that, you know, uh, fuses are not blown. Everything's plugged in the right way. That the module is nice and good and snug and plugged in. Uh, there's nothing you know else is wrong with the vehicle. No accessories are on. That's another thing, guys. Accessories inside the vehicle. You want to make sure that those accessories are totally turned off in the vehicle. You don't want to have anything aftermarket. And absolutely very important, you do not want anything that's tuned. If you're doing a tuned vehicle, I highly recommend you not performing a programming on the session because you could run into a lot of issues with a tuned vehicle. There's a lot of vehicles out there are tuned and customers are coming in and wanting you to program the vehicle. It's highly recommended not to program a vehicle that's already tuned. Um, you have every right to reject this, the, the, the service because there is a tune and you could damage the software that's going into this vehicle with the tune software that's in it already as well. Uh, this is all OEM software. This is not working with any tune software. So you're going to want to uh, make sure that either they remove that tune off the vehicle before you program the car. All right. So also keep that in mind. All right. So you're going to go and click on yes. All right. And then you're going to verify the VIN at the top. It's going to populate the VIN every single time. Now there's different scenarios here. Now if you replace, you can replace a new mod uh, used module. On a Ford, that's not a problem. Okay, you can go off and get a used salvage PCM from a, a junkyard or for somebody else that you you know on eBay or something. Like that. You can get that. You can program it. The only thing is that you got to make sure you look out for is that when you uh, try to program that you replace that VIN with the correct VIN. Okay, don't try to program the vehicle with the same VIN because that car that you're programming with is going to have the VIN that the original car it came out of. So make sure that you take the time to see the VIN number, read it. Edit it if you have to before you move forward. It will ask you later if it is correct or not, if it doesn't see it. But if it doesn't, it will move forward to program the vehicle with that old VIN. All right, so make sure you take the time, look at it, and make sure that you uh, correct the VIN number before moving forward. Also, the odometer reading. It's not going to really allow you to edit the odometer because it's automatically going to populate once to see it with the vehicle. And, and it'll see it as, a lot, I believe, what the uh, last RO was working on or, you know, what it's reading now in the vehicle. That should be reading live data. OK, so um, that that you won't really be able to edit. So um, that should always read live data. OK, so once you do that, you've checked everything off. Uh, the VIN number is correct. I'm ready to go. I'm going to click on the tick in the bottom right hand corner. All right. Then it's going to give you another uh, page populating all information plus the VIN number and the odometer. Make sure that that is correct before we move forward. Um, so everything looks good to me now it's going to allow me to program as you can see in the bottom right hand corner there is no check mark anymore but now my top right hand corner where you see a little um toolbox that toolbox now is highlighted and i'm able to use it um once I, it's highlighted i can go ahead and click on that toolbox it's going to bring me up to a menu where i have self-test module programming uh pats functions which we do key programming with as you know um, now, like I said, the newer software came out, I believe, and the uh, 16 software that came out for Ford, um, they gave you the opportunity to do now um, engine diagnostics. You could do uh, chassis diagnostics and some electrical diagnostics as well. Uh, but again, keep in mind, like I said earlier, that this software only pertains to vehicles from 2018 and up. Um, I'm not sure if they do 16 and 17 models. Um, but I know 2018 it works and it scans the vehicle with no problem and it'll give you all the current um, model DTCs that are in, you know, DTCs that are in the vehicle. 
uh, at that time. So you can check it with this. Um, once you do that and you've checked it, you can do a health check on it. You're just going to move forward. Today we're going to do programming, obviously. So I'm going to click on module programming, which is highlighted. All right. And then I'm going to click on the tick in the bottom right hand corner. All right. So now it's going to give me a menu of module uh, program module installation. This is basically a PMI. You're programming a module for the first time. Um, ideally, guys, uh, I know it's not possible, but when programming with Ford, it's ideal, best practice to have the original module with you that communicates. Because what that does, it makes life a lot easier. You'll be able to pull the information off the original module uh, with the software. If you can communicate, obviously, and you'll be able to transfer it over to the module, which is called the as built data. The as built data will be transferred from the original module to the new module uh, so that you can have a better and more uh, successful programming event. In case you don't have the original module, there is ways of going around it. You just have to get the service, um, gain access to the service information on the Ford Motorcraft website. Uh, once you get that, you can enter in the VIN and get the uh, as-built data. Um, there's certain set circumstances you might not get it, but most of the times you'll be able to retrieve it. Uh, but to get it, it's just you know you just have to email them to retrieve it um, for, and they'll be able to email that to you. All right, so that's when you and then once you click on that icon you have a number of modules that you can program with, all right? So you can do anything from the ABS to the um, uh, PCM, the power steering control module, and so, for, so on and so forth, all right? And now you, module reprogramming, basically what it means, reprogramming, you're updating the module. This is where you would go if you're looking for a TSB update on a particular module that you're working on. All right, once you click on that, these are the, vehicle, these are the modules that you'll be able to uh, update depending on the vehicle. Now, all manufacturers don't offer you every single module that, you know, you have listed here. Uh, the older you get, the lesser you have. The newer you get, the more you have. So it, it all depends on the, the vehicle. Some older vehicles have more than other newer models. You know what I mean? It all depends, okay? So uh, just keep that in mind going into it when you're trying to sell a job that you might not have the availability to do it, but you can always go back into the vehicle coverage or go back into the website to see what you can and cannot do. All right. All right. So moving forward now with APIMs, I, I'm not sure if you guys caught this, but APIM modules, it's listed here, but you can't do them, unfortunately. Uh, you're going to still have to go through IDS. You still need a password device to do it, um, but you need IDS and a valid subscription to IDS to be able to program this. Um, this module. So it's just listed here. So when you click on it, it's going to tell you, oh, stop. You need IDS to program this vehicle. So it's not able to do it here. So at least it gives you some direction on how do you, what needs to be used to program an APIM in case you accidentally purchase this software. It will redirect you to buy the IDS software. All right. So no APIMs on these, um, on these programs. All right, and then the program parameters, basically uh, it includes a list of options that are configurable on the vehicle, uh, like the transmission I'm about to show you guys in a little bit, you know, selling strategy ID, you can per this is where you would input it. Um, always consult the uh, appropriate service manual before updating the programmable parameters. Uh, don't, change, uh, don't change something just because you see it in the list in the tool, and only change the parameters listed in the service information. So only do it if it absolutely tells you to do it in the service information. All right, don't do it if it doesn't tell you to because you might change something and then the vehicle might not work properly. All right, um, and as built data. So basically all as built data is is basically it's going to link to the server to retrieve the information uh, that that module had when it was first built from the, um, the uh, factory, Ford's factory. Okay, all that does is pull the information and send it over to the module. That's all that's going to get for you if you need that. All right, so today we're going to do a PCM. So basically, um, we have two scenarios. Either I have a new PCM, I'm about to install it, but I don't have the original one, or I have a new PCM and I do have the original one in there, and I'm going to program it now. So what I would do, let's say I have the original module in there right now. I'd leave the original module in there. I'm not replacing anything yet. I'm leaving the original module in there, and I'm clicking on PCM. All right, this is going to walk me through what I need to do for the replacement. So once I know it's the PCM, I'm going to click on PCM for programming. Okay, say so during module programming, the module goes through a VIN verification process. Again, this is where it's going to see whether or not the VIN number is correct that you have inputted earlier. If not, you can go, go ahead and edit it out if it's not correct. 
All right. And right now it's showing me if the VIN number is correct. For this particular vehicle, yes, the VIN number is correct. If it didn't tell me that, I click no and I can go ahead and enter the correct one and then move forward. All right. Now I want, I'm showing you guys this because this is what you will actually see if you're updating a particular module. Okay. So on this, I'll just read it out to you and explain to you what we're seeing right now. So a later calibration is available. Do you want to program the PCM with it? So basically what this is telling me right now is that the uh, TCM was replaced on this vehicle, and it doesn't have any information, but the PCM has, an, uh, has uh, been programmed, and it has a newer update with a newer update for the TCM. So on this particular instance, what I just did is I either I'm looking for an update on a TCM, or I replaced a TCM on a Ford, and the PCM controls the output. So I'm going ahead and updating the PCM, because the PCM is going to go ahead and do the update with the TCM sequentially. So automatically, it's going to program my module once I update my PCM, all right? But if you're just programming the PCM and you don't see TCM, that means it's only gonna do the PCM. So the TCM might have, has a separate module, so you would have to update that module separately, okay? But for this, what you're seeing right now is a sequential programming. What you're seeing is that a PCM is controlling the TCM for programming and it, it sees the TCM is blank, so it wants to update both, which you normally would do when you program a TCM. All right, and this is exactly what you would see if there is no update available. If you're looking for an update, that there no no calibration is available for this mod. Now, make sure that you see the current version of the Ford software that you're using, uh, because it's very easily that it's the old software and it's telling there's no update available. That's not necessarily true. Just because it says it's not available, make sure you look at that update version. That may, if you have an older version, that means that you're not running the latest and greatest software, you're going to have to go ahead and update it, and if you go back into it again, odds are you should have an update. And if you don't, you don't, but at least you know the latest software is available, and you know that there is no update available with the latest software. So don't get fooled by that. Make sure you have the latest software updated version. All right, so once I click on that and everything is going through, basically it's going to start loading the necessary files that I need from the server to start populating everything for programming. And now with Ford, it's very tedious. It actually just cycle the key on and off, on and off, on and off many times. Um, so it's going to tell you verification that if the key is on, it's going to want to know. You're going to say yes. You're going to click on the tick. All right. Uh, the module you're about to program has multiple internal memory locations. During programming, you'll see multiple bar graphs. This is normal and expected. Please do not disconnect any cables or turn the key off during this process unless instructed to do so by the service tool. So that's basically what it's telling you is that if you program the module, make sure that nothing is turned off on the vehicle during programming um, and nothing is disconnected. Make sure everything is off. Make sure the accessories in the vehicle, no aftermarket components are on before you start programming. You do not want to interrupt this during programming because you could have run into issues. All right, so again, at this point, I want to make sure that battery maintainer is working like it should. Your battery voltage is up and up to par for program before you start programming the vehicle, and you've checked all your uh, scenarios before you program the car, and we're good to go. So once you do that, you're going to confirm that. It's going to ask you to search, uh, turn the ignition off. You must turn the ignition off at this point. Make sure you click on the tick. Um, at that point, once it turns the ignition off, it's going to tell you to uh, remove the old module if uh, – a new one's being installed and you have the original in there, remove the old module and plug in the new one. If the new one is in there and you do not have the old one, you can ignore that message that tells you to uh, remove the old one and put the new one in there. You can ignore that and just move forward, okay? So once it does that, it's going to go ahead and start programming the vehicle. This is the menu you're going to start seeing. At this point, you do not want to inter interrupt the programming. You want to make sure nobody gets around the vehicle, that it can interrupt the programming because the, uh, during programming, it could... Um, it will stop the programming, and you will most likely you might run into some communication issues until you figure out what is going on with the uh, software or the vehicle itself. But once you do and you get everything back to normal again, you should be able to start where you last started. All right? Now, once the, the module is programmed, programmed, at this point, at the end, it's going to tell you the calibration has been loaded and checked. That means that you have done a successful programming event, programmed the PCM, everything took successfully, and that you have no issues. So right now, it's checked and loaded the calibration, and it's going to clear the DTCs for you once you click on that tick mark. All right? At that point, it's cleared all the DTCs. It's going to ask you to cycle the key off and on. It doesn't do this for every single vehicle. I just want to show you guys the different commands that it gives you. Uh, certain vehicles will ask you to cycle the key off and on and then press the tick button. 
All right. Now, with programming PCMs, you must must uh, program the keys depending on where the anti theft uh, is uh, located in. If the anti theft is located in the PCM, you must program the keys um, with a minimum of two keys, a maximum, I believe, of three or four. It depends on the chart. You have to go into the chart and see how uh, the maximum amount that you can do. But I know a certain of a minimum is one. I mean, two. Excuse me. Um, and some will require you to do some resets on it, depending on where you get it. So again, it, there's going to be a list that you're going to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the paths function on the screen. We're going to, all right, and then it's going to give you a chart right here, really simple chart. It says in the beginning, the first one, control function location. This one is located in the instrument cluster, okay, um, where you just reprogram the PCM. So if the anti-theft system is located in the instrument cluster, that means I don't have to program the keys on this vehicle. All that means is that I just have to do a parameter reset on the vehicle, all right? Um, because it says that the patch is located in the instrument cluster. But if that said PCM on it, then right there automatically I know that I have to program the keys to this vehicle, all right? So if the PCM is there listed, then that means I know that I need two keys. But you're only going to know that when you get into this function or you read that list that I mentioned to you earlier, all right? So Right here, it's going to tell you maximum amount of keys. Right here, it's telling you eight for this particular car. Eight keys can be programmed, maximum amount of keys. But you do need a minimum of two keys. So the minimum two keys are right there, and that's two right there. So what that's exactly right there is going to tell you. Again, that chart will tell you the minimum that's required. And so it says right here, very important, it requires parameter reset after installation of new PCM or PATS. It does not say that for the instrument cluster. So this only pertains to the PCM and the PATS module. So since we replaced the PCM, yes, I'm going to have to do a parameter reset on this vehicle before I program the keys. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. But once I know that, and I know that I have to program the keys, and I know, and if you see the image of the key, that's basically what the key looks like. For this particular car, again, they're going to vary. They're going to vary in ranges of different key models, but that chart will help you as well determine the key that you need for the for the key um, the key cutting and the key code that you're going to need to program the the keys. Once you do that and you click on next, uh, it's basically going to make sure that the key is on, engine off on the vehicle. Um, and then once you know that the key is on, engine off, you're going to click on the tick. It's going to ask you to wait for a 10 minute access point to be able to get into the security module of the vehicle. You're going to go ahead and click on yes, and you can do your thing for about 10 minutes. All right, it's going to go to the security access uh, bar graph right here. You're going to wait for it to load completely blue. All right, that's what it's going to look like. And at the end, it's going to tell, tell you at the uh, left-hand corner that this test is now complete. That means that now you can go in and actually get into the function to program the keys. All right, so it's going to give you another disclaimer before you get into programming the keys. Again, it's going to say you will need two keys to start the vehicle if equipped with a place, PATS, IC, VIC, or HEC module. Okay, so it's just going to give you a little, it's going to do that with every single uh, vehicle that you program the keys with, all right? And you're going to verify that. You're going to make sure that you click uh, yes to continue, okay? And like I mentioned to you guys earlier, you guys, no clone keys, all right? That's absolutely no, no. You don't want to use clone keys. All right, nothing from eBay, nothing from Amazon. You want to make sure they're OEM, key, OEM keys. The reason why is because the system knows. All right, if you have an OEM key and then your second key you try to program it, it's a, a clone key, it's not going to program it because it knows it's a clone key. Yes, there are ways around it, but I'm not going to get into that with you because this is all OEM information. So best practice, get an OEM key. Let's not go clone keys because at the end of the day, you're going to waste your time. You're going to waste your customer's time. And, you know, just explain it that way to your customer so they don't waste their time. You know, they, they might argue with you that they don't, they don't have enough money for an OEM key. You know, it's too much money aftermarket. It's more cheaper. It's better. It's, you know, it, it, it's what I'm working with right now. Unfortunately, it sucks to hear it, but they're going to have to go with OEM keys to get this car started. You're going to run around in circles trying to program the keys, and you're never going to get it started. You're going to be scratching your head wondering why. And it's probably because they're clone keys. All right. So best practice when you're doing these uh, key programming, go get an OEM key. All right. All right. So that PCM is programmed right now. If I program it successfully, I've uh, got two OEM keys, and I've basically gone through the cycles of you know key on, key off, key on cycles that has asked me to do after I've done my parameter reset. That car should start. 
If the car doesn't start for every reason, again, it might be the keys. It might be something going on with that PCM. It might be a can communication going to the vehicle. It could be several things going on with the vehicle that be causing that vehicle not to start. All right, so that's up to you to do your, your diagnosis as a technician and figure out what's going on in that car and why it's not getting started. All right, so we've uh, programmed the PCM on a 2010 Ford Expedition. All right, so now we're going to do the cellular strategy ID and body ID. This is only performed when you either replace a valve body in a vehicle and that requires you to enter these cell noise strategy IDs. Most of the times the manufacturer will equip you with those numbers or you can always go get them on the bell housing and transmission. Most of the time when getting these numbers, they should be located on the bell housing and transmission just like you see on the image in front of you. And it should be by the bell, between the bell housing and the valve body of this transmission. Um, this one's located, I believe, should be located on the driver's side or passenger side of the vehicle. Um, and um, as you can see here, the sticker is right there on the, on the bell housing. The two important numbers that you're going to be looking for on that uh, sticker on the bell housing are going to be the top and bottom numbers. Um, you're going to see one starts with the SOL strategy, that's a cellular strategy ID, and SOL body ID, that's um, the uh, cellular body ID for the valve body flow rate data. All right, this is basically going to imp the input information numbers that it needs to work the transmission in the proper way with the PCM. All right. Once you do that and you know that number, you're going to write it down. You're going to go into your FV80S software, open it up, go into your uh, programming option, and then what you're going to select, like I mentioned to you earlier, is the programming parameters files. Once you click on that, you'll get this screen up. You're going to want to click on transmission. Once you click on transmission, this is the option that you're going to see. You're going to enter that selling strategy ID number on the top and then send, uh, enter in your selling body ID at the bottom. Okay, and then you're going to want to click on update. And once you click on update, that will say it's successful. It, it updated successfully, and it should be fine. If you see an error message, either your body ID or strategy ID number is incorrect, or there's something else going wrong. So you want to go back and make sure that those numbers are correct and re-enter those, and you should have a successful update of the uh, solenoid flow rate data for that transmission. All right. Now, key key thing here again, guys, is that when you're doing this uh, update on this uh, valve body. Uh, flow data, you also, also, it's a must that you're going to want to update your PCM, all right? You want to make sure that your PCM has the latest and greatest software so it can run in junction with that newer software that you entered in to that flow rate data for your valve body, okay? So make sure that you absolutely update the PCM after you're done updating the cellular ID so everything can run the right way. Or if not, you might get a check engine light or you might not have any update. Now, if you don't have any update, that's great. That means that all you needed to do was update the body ID, and there's no update for the PCM. That PCM is running with the latest and greatest software to run with that flow rate data you just entered. All right? So basically, that's it. Uh, want an easier and more efficient way to program vehicles? Well, look no further and go get your you know, your uh, Drive Pro scan tool uh, and go get your uh, free uh, battery maintainer because today until November 30th, you'll be able to get that for free, a $600 value uh, for free with the purchase of a Drive Pro Yes. All right, guys, and like I said, you have master certified technicians out there waiting uh, on call to be able to assist you and assist you on any diagnostics, any programming repair work that you may need and send you over to the right team if you do need programming. We also have a program that's called RAP out there. It's called RAP Assistant Programming. We have uh, technicians out there programming vehicles at a separate department. Um, this tool is equipped with that service as well. So you have a diagnostic application and you have a uh, programming application all in one tool. And you're not all alone by yourself on this. There's always people that help you, uh, whether it's diagnostic support or programming, all right? And uh, everything's real time. Everything, you know, we give you repair guidance. Uh, like I said, through all master certified technicians, they're all here waiting for you to help you, assist you, anything that you need. Uh, really great bunch of guys. Uh, I work with them here in the office in New York, and they're very, very, very intelligent, smart guys out there doing what they're doing. Um, so, you know, they'll, they're just waiting there to help you guys out in any way they can. All right. Um, uh, like I said, it's got a built-in remote assisted programming. Um, it offers everything from performance from IVS 360 
and and you know we're the leading um, team of doing all OES OE software. So go out there and get your Drive Pro. Yes, go get that uh, free six hundred dollar battery maintainer, which is really cool in my opinion because um, that's what you're going to need for programming these vehicles. Absolutely. Again, you don't want to be using a charger. You're going to want to get a main, uh, battery maintainer. This is a great opportunity to get something that's six hundred dollar value for free. All right. So um, again. You know, it, the offer uh, is there till November 30th. Uh, right now, we're going to do a little Q&A. So we're going to take a little couple of questions out there. Um, I have my uh, master tech on the line. His name is Chris Schneider, and he's going to be there uh, answering some questions with me right now. So if anybody wants to go ahead and ask any questions, uh, please do so. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Hey, Henry, how are we today? Doing good, doing good. All right. So I uh, was just waiting for our first uh, question here. Uh, we had somebody in there asking about what an APIM is, um, most commonly referred to as like the sync module. Okay, Chris, um, how about you take that? You can go ahead and uh, yeah. answer that for them. That's like uh, the media hub essentially for the stereo system. Um, the APIM module itself goes through a unique programming process because it gets programmed through USB and through the OBD2 port. Um, having that linked together with the OEM software to pull the data and also the Ford website to access the data. Um, it does get programmed through the website itself, so it is kind of like that unicorn module in the car. Nice, nice, good stuff. Right. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you, Gene. All right. All right. And uh, our next question is, do I need two keys to program a uh, uh, PSCM or other, other other than PCM. Okay, um, Henry, I'm going to take this one and try and yeah, clear the air on man. this whole the whole <laughs> PAT scenario. Okay. So okay. we have two basic types of PAT systems: either the engine computer, the PCM controls everything, or another module controls the keys, and the PCM is in charge of, you know, the engine side of things. So if we replace the module that holds the keys, be it the PCM or if it's in the instrument cluster, the instrument cluster holds it. If we replace the module with the keys, we got to learn two keys to that module for it to work. If we're not replacing the module that holds the keys, we don't need to do anything extra to it unless it's the PCM. And then we need to pair that module with the module that's holding the keys if it's that type of path system. I don't know any Fords loaded um, where we need a power steering module is holding keys. I think we're limited to standalone paths module, uh, instrument cluster, body control module, or engine computer for the most part. All right. Uh, the next question we have here is, can you program uh, Audi VW uh, through wrap on the Drive Pro? I could take it as Chris. Uh, right now, uh, we are offering it, but right now we're still in the works of getting the software ready to go for launch. Um, for But at the moment, we are working on the process of getting these vehicles, these manufacturers up and running through WRAP. So just stay tuned. They'll be ready soon. So, yeah, yeah we'll, we we'll be in there soon. Uh, what's good about the Drive Pro is that there is J2534 technology built into it. Um, and on the back end, we have the licensing for all the software, so like Volkswagen, Audi, and our master technicians, if you dial into support, they can tap into that, and they can program uh, Volkswagen, Audi vehicles for you using the Drive Pro ES. So for right now, it's just limited in support, not directly in the wrap program just yet. Yeah. Correct. All right, our next question. Uh, I'm still having prob I'm still having problems with Pats in 2014 and up Fords. Anyone else experiencing this? I'm using IDS and I have LSID. Okay, Fadi. Um, recently, I've programmed LSID Pats. I think version 119.06 or later changes the way that it interfaces. It used to pop out to an Internet Explorer window. There was some configuration needed. Um, the newest version of this, it launches completely in the FJDS software. It will prompt you for your Motorcraft service user ID and password. Um, and then on the second screen, it will prompt you for your LSID and your Authy password. 
Um, once they go through with that, you know, it, it should bring you right to that next screen. Fadi, I know I've seen you in the queue here a couple of times. So if you uh, still have an issue with it, send a case in when you have the software up and running, we can take a peek with you and see if we can get through it. All right. Um, how do you do a parameter uh, reset or rest? A reset. Reset. It's very simple to be honest with you. It's not rocket scientists. When you get into the security function, uh, there's a button there for parameter reset. But again, keep in mind uh, which module you're doing that parameter reset. Uh, you know, it's going to tell you which one you can and cannot do. But it's very simple. All you do is push the button. It'll tell you that you need a minimum of two keys. And then once you know you have that, you can go ahead and push that button. It'll just to re do the reset for you and you can move forward. Just like most of the other service functions, it's a single click once you get into the uh, into the paths menu. Yep. Okay. Um, we have a question about the Ford software on the Drive Pro um, and how that that works. Okay. the uh, The software does get loaded on the Drive Pro, so it works, but we're not able to launch that for end user interface. It's how we use it on the back side of the tool to support you. Um, the software isn't accessed by the end user on that side. Oh, and one more thing, guys. I just want to mention out there, uh, if you guys are thinking if we can do Mazda right now, uh, technical support is assisting on Mazda. Um, but right now, RAP is not doing Mazda at the moment. Um, I'm not sure if we're moving forward with the Mazda so uh, software yet, but I'm pretty sure that we'll have something in the future. But at this time, we are we can't do the MMP Mazda programming on RAP at the moment. <laughs> right. Through support, we have other ways to do things. But yes. kind of like how we have this BC question up here about the BCM coming in through RAP. Um, the body control modules require a couple extra setup features that's not in the J programming software, um, the FJDS. Uh, we do have some other options to go through it, and with the Drive Pro, some of those service functions most of the time are loaded right on your side of the tool under special functions in the modules themselves. So, you know, we can do BCMs through support, but right now through RAP directly, they do not do them. Um, but if you do have the Drive Pro and you have support with us, feel free to send a case into support, and we can work you through the programming that way. Right on. So I see another question here. Uh, when a locksmith uses an aftermarket tool to program keys and changes the PATS type from timed to coded, is there any way to change it back? Well, I would um, probably get a hold of that locksmith tool because the regular Ford software does not change that coding. So if it inadvertently gets flipped from time to coded, as somebody, you know, it's like a hot force past the, the timer delay. Um, the locksmith tools that do that should be able to turn it back. The regular OEM equipment will not. And through factory means, it would even call for like a module replacement at that point. I've been yes. down this road a couple times with instrument clusters. Oh, not fun. Not fun. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> All right. Does anyone have any more questions? Looks like the last one in the chat. All right, guys, just keep in mind that uh, if you have any more questions we didn't get to you, there is uh, that email at the bottom of the screen, uh, webinars at opusivs.com. Um, you can go ahead and feel free to send any, uh, you know, questions that you guys may have. Uh, you know, a master tech like Chris will be able to call you guys right away or respond to your email uh, whenever they can to be able to assist you with that further. All right. Um, so since we don't have any questions, guys, thank you for uh, your time tonight and thank you for joining us in this webinar. Again, go out and get that Dry Pro. Yes, it's a free battery maintainer value of 600 bucks, which is awesome, I think. So go out there and get that. And uh, I hope you guys stay safe and uh, everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. Have a great night, guys. Take care.